everyone. Welcome to Cornerstone Kids Online. I am so excited you are here with us today. We are going to worship together, we are going to learn our memory verse, and we are going to have some amazing Bible stories to share with our friends and family. Now we're going to go over our next-gen core values. Number one, love God. We love God because He loved us first. Number two, love people. That is my favorite commandment that we have, is to love others. Let's go out there today and do that with everyone we see. Number three, love life. Find joy in everything. Have a good time. Just go out there and enjoy all of God's creation. This is my faith, this is my focus All of my days, I know where my hope is I live it loud, I shout the chorus Because I know, oh, you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe and keep on looking, looking, looking to you For where I'm going, knowing you go there too I'll keep on looking, looking, looking to you i fix my eyes on you This is my focus All of my days I know where my hope is I live it loud I shot the chorus Because I know Oh, you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see To see I will trust in you I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see To see I will trust in you I will believe And keep on looking for where I'm going, knowing you go there too I'll keep on looking, keep on looking, looking, looking to you I'll fix my, I'll fix my eyes, eyes. i 
Hey Cornerstone Kids, I'm Mr. Dusty and I'm here to give you this month's memory verse. So up on your feet, I'll say it once and then we'll say it together. Sound good? All right. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now say it with me. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It's being sure of what we do not see. Hebrews 11.1 1. Now, it's time for your Bible story. Hello friends! Have you ever met someone and thought you knew what they were like? But then you discovered there was so much more to them than you realized? I know I have. People are always surprising me. It can be so easy for us to think we know people without really getting to know them. One of Jesus' followers, named Peter, discovered that in a big way. Hello friends, I'm Erica, and welcome back to another week in the STEAM Lab. I've had so much fun these last couple weeks discovering and trying new things in here, and usually, whenever I try something new, it feels a little bit like a leap of faith. I'm leaping. Ah! Ugh! Anyway, faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. And this week is no different because... Photography! Photography is fun because it mixes technology with art and it lets you make memories. Oh, that's a nice smile. That's beautiful. But I'm still trying to figure things out. Yesterday, I wanted to take some artistic photos of random objects in my life. So I did the telescope, that random black thing with all the wires, that one in the middle, uh, that plant, it was really cool, the clamps, there's lots of colors in there, and this. But when I started trying to use the camera, all my pictures were coming out blurry. Can you even tell what that is? Can you, can you even tell what that is? I, I don't even know. <sighs> Or this? Any guesses? Can you see what that is? Ugh. Turns out with these like fancy camera, oh, okay, sorry. With these fancy cameras, be careful. You have to actually adjust the focus on the lens. See, this is focus, you, and out. Or you can just simply flip it to autofocus. Ding. But then I realized most people make mistakes when they don't know what they're doing. And I was like, 
And then I realized that I even figured out how to fix the problem myself. And then I was all like, yeah! <laughs> so I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> Here's my second try at my photos. Ta-da! Great, right? So, in today's Bible story, we get to hear all about how God changed the picture that Peter saw. But I don't want to give away the details now. You guys got to take a look for yourself. See you back in a bit. Oh, oh, oh. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 10. As the early church grew, Peter traveled from town to town telling people the great news about Jesus and how he healed sick people. Now in Jaffa, he raised a dead woman back to life through the power of God's spirit. Tabitha, get up. Many people in Joppa became believers. So Peter stayed there with a man named Simon, a leather worker who lived right beside the sea. Peter often went up to the roof to pray. Ah, this is the life. Thank you, Lord, for all these fellow Jews believing in Jesus. But God's plan was bigger than Peter imagined. About 40 miles north, a Roman army commander named Cornelius was praying too. Lord, thank you for all you've given to me and my family. Though Cornelius was not Jewish, him and his family worshiped God. They freely gave to anyone who needed help. While Cornelius was praying, God sent an angel in a vision. Cornelius. The angel's power and brilliance was so strong, Cornelius fell back in awe. What is it, Lord? Your prayers and gifts to poor people are like an offering to God. So he has remembered you. Now send men to Joppa. Have them bring back a man named Peter. He is staying with Simon by the sea. Yes, Lord. The angel vanished. Then Cornelius leapt from his feet. He called on two of his servants and a trusted soldier and told them everything. Leave at once for Joppa. Sir, yes, sir. The trio left around three o'clock, marching at top speed. Around noon the next day, they neared Joppa. At Simon's home, Peter had climbed up the roof to pray. Lord, you've done amazing things here in Joppa. What's next? Mm. <laughs> Lunch is next, I guess. While lunch was being prepared, Peter continued to pray, and God sent him a vision, but it wasn't an angel. What is happening? It appeared to Peter that something like a large sheet was dropping from heaven. It contained a zoo of animals, pigs and camels, rabbits and birds and reptiles. Get up, Peter. Kill and eat. Peter stared in shock. The Jews were forbidden to eat the meats of these animals, which were called unclean. No, Lord, I will not. I have never eaten anything that is not pure and clean. Do not say anything is not pure that God has made clean. Two more times, the same thing happened. Then the sheep was taken back up to heaven. Peter blinked and looked around. What does it all mean? At that very moment, the men sent by Cornelius arrived at Simon's front door. Is there a Peter staying here? Up on the roof, God's spirit spoke to Peter. Three men are looking for you. Get up and go downstairs. Don't let anything keep you from going with them. I have sent them. Still overwhelmed by his vision, Peter hurried down the steps, ran out the front door where he found the men. I'm the one you're looking for. Why have you come? Sir, we have come from Cornelius, the Roman commander. He's a good man who worships God. The angel told him to invite you to his house so Cornelius can hear what you have to say. Go to his house? 
Just as it was forbidden for Jews to eat certain foods, it was also forbidden for Jews to enter the home of non-Jews. Oh! In that moment, Peter understood his vision. God was making a new rule about what was clean. The story of Jesus was not just for Jewish people, but for everyone. Please, come in. We'll leave first thing in the morning. The next day, Peter and the three men set out, along with some of the believers from Joppa. The following day, they arrived at Caesarea. This is the home of Commander Cornelius, sir. Thank you. Peter must have paused for a moment before he entered the house. Though God had told him to come, he had never entered the house of a non-Jewish person. Here it goes. At the home, Cornelius had gathered all his relatives and friends to listen to Peter. Greetings, Peter. We are honored you've come. The commander lowered himself before Peter, showing a sign of deep respect. Stand up. I am only a man myself. As Cornelius stood, Peter surveyed the room before him. He took a deep breath. You know that it is against our law for a Jew to enter the home of someone who isn't a Jew, but, but God has shown me that I should not say anyone is not pure and clean. May I ask why you sent for me? Cornelius had explained everything the angel had told him, and Peter shared how God sent Jesus here to share God's love, how Jesus taught and healed people through God's power. Then he would be killed. But then, God would raise him back to life again. We ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people. All who believe in Jesus have their sins forgiven through his name. Amen. Praise Jesus. Glory to God. Before Peter could finish speaking, God sent his Holy Spirit down to be with Cornelius and his family and friends. The Jewish believers who came with Peter they stared in amazement. But they're not Jews. Surely no one can keep these people from being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. Peter baptized Cornelius and his friends and family in the name of Jesus. He stayed with them for several days, overjoyed by the new perspective God had given him. Hello, kids. It's time for another rousing game of Where's Brando? See if you can help me find him. Oh, ha ha! Is Brando underneath this chicken? No, he is not. Is Brando next to this table tennis court? No, he is not. Is Brando underneath this desk? No, he is not. Is Brando hiding underneath this robot helmet? Mm. No! No, he, he's not. <laughs> where is Brando? Seriously, where's Brando? Yes. Mm. <laughs> Coconuts, am I right? I'm Brandon. Uh, and I'm John, and welcome to the So-and-So Show. Popsicles, am I right? Brandon, Brandon what are you doing? Where did, where did you get that popsicle? Oh, Longbeard Carl left it in the studio a couple weeks ago. doing now? Just enjoying the summertime, my friend. Yeah, but you don't need sunscreen inside. I know, but don't you just love the smell of it? It's like the smell of summer. Uh, see? Ugh. 
Ugh. Does it's, that smell like summer? No, it smells like my Aunt Agatha's beach house. Oh, what's the difference? Hey, what's, what's the, the difference? difference? What's the difference? So, in this game, we're gonna see two photographs that look the same, but really aren't. Yep, and whoever finds what's different first wins. Oh, 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 oh I'm so gonna win. I wouldn't be too sure. Uh -huh. Let's go. All right. Ah, uh, summer. That's what my arm smells like. Mm -hmm. We look like we're having a good time, John. Yeah, but these photos look exactly the same. I can't see anything that looks... Uh, uh, no. Wait. Got it. On the left picture, there's a sun in the sky and there are people playing in the water. And on the right picture, it has no sun and there are no people in the water. Oh! Wow, good observation. Yeah, yeah, okay, next photo. Cool, now we're at the pool. I could sure use a dip right now. What about you, John? No time, focused on the game. Sure, hey, but don't forget to have fun. It's only a game. Oh, in the first photo, my face is sometimes sad, sometimes angry. In the second photo, my expression is more perplexed and pensive. Oh! Wow. That's a very subtle difference. Yeah, there's nothing subtle about it. Next. Uh, looks like a good day for a picnic. <laughs> Concentrating. 13, 14, 15. What are you counting? The blades of grass in each picture. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That's gonna take you all day. 22, 22. Can't we just look for something? Got it! In the right photo, I am smiling slightly wider than in the left photo. What? No, no, zoom in to a close up. See? In this one, I'm like, and in this one, I'm like, like that. They're different. Or, there are clouds in the photo on the left, but no clouds on the right. Ha! Oh, man. And the winner is John. <laughs> oh, yes, best two. Why? Well, it's best two out of three, buddy. So why'd we even do the third photo? You'd already won. I know. I just I love winning. <laughs> it's Bible story time with Kellen. Bible stories are so fun. I get to tell them to everyone. Hey, 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 what's up? Hey, Kellen. Yeah, sounded good, Kellen. Thanks. Hey, what's the story about? Today's story is about the time when Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, met Cornelius, a commander in the Roman army. And here to help me tell the story are the so-and-so show players. I am so and so excited. Can we play the game again? This story happened sometime after Jesus had died and come back to life, which, by the way, is still an amazing thing to think about. It was so amazing that many people believed in Jesus just because of what they heard about him. But here's something you may not have known. Many Jesus followers at the time thought you had to be Jewish before you could follow Jesus. In fact, there were laws that said Jewish people and non-Jewish people, or Gentiles, couldn't even hang out together. So our story begins in the home of a Gentile, the Roman commander Cornelius, about three o'clock in the afternoon. I wonder what time it is. I'm guessing three o'clock in the afternoon, huh? Hey, that's right. Cornelius. Whoa, what is it, Lord? Your prayers and gifts to poor people are like offerings to God and he has remembered you. <sighs> Send men to Joppa and have them bring back a man called Peter. Okay. <laughs> so Cornelius sent three men to Joppa to find Peter. Around noon the next day, Peter was on the roof praying when he got really, really hungry. Lord, you are faithful. I pray that you... Whoa, I'm hungry. I wonder if lunch is ready yet. Whoa, I'm hungrier than I thought I was. Peter had a vision. He saw something like a sheet being let down from heaven. Uh, where are we? I think we're on this guy's roof. Hey, who's that guy? In his vision, Peter saw animals of all kinds in the sheet. They probably weren't talking animals, 
but they were the kind of animals that would have been against the law for Peter to eat. As Peter watched, he heard a voice. Get up, Peter. Kill and eat. What did that voice say? Kill and eat. Oh. Wait, us? No, Lord, I won't do it. I I've never eaten anything that isn't pure and clean. Do not say anything is not pure that God has made clean. Whose side are you on here, vision voice? The vision was repeated three times. Oh. 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 Oh, I'm dizzy and confused. Are you gonna eat us or not? Then the sheet was immediately taken back up to heaven. Hang on. No! What could this vision mean? At that very moment, the three men Cornelius sent to find Peter arrived. And the next day, Peter went with them to Cornelius' house. You're here. Oh, stand up. I, look, I'm a human being, just like oh. everybody else. I've brought all of my family and all of my friends to hear what you have to say. Go on, say hello, everybody. Hello, Peter! Uh, hello, everyone. It's, it's nice to meet you. Um... You know it's against our law for me, a Jew, to enter the home of a Gentile, or to even be close to one. But God has showed me that I shouldn't say that anyone is unclean. And that, that's why I'm here. I, I realize now that God treats everyone the same. He accepts people from every nation who have respect for him and do what's right. Peter told them all about Jesus. And he told them how anyone who believes in Jesus Jew or Gentile, will be saved. While Peter was speaking, the Holy Spirit came on everyone in the house who heard the message. Yeah. Hallelujah! This is the best day of my life. I forgot to change my costume. Oh, man. Well, surely no one can keep these people from being baptized. This is the best day of my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Woo! Oh, yeah. Did it. Thank you! Thank you! Not sure baptism worked like that back then, but everyone who believed in Jesus was baptized that day. After staying with Cornelius for a few days, Peter left to spread the word that faith in Jesus wasn't just for people like him, but for everyone. The end. That's a great story, Kellen. Yeah, and well done, so and so show players. That was so cool, but, but I'm wondering, uh, would we have ever heard about Jesus if Peter hadn't had that weird vision? That's a really good question. Before that vision, Peter thought Jesus was only for people who were the same as him. Yeah, but now we know Jesus came for everyone, even different people like us. Yeah, <laughs> and we are way different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, doesn't matter where you were born or the color of your skin or how different you are. We can put our faith in the same Savior. Mm -hmm. That's super cool. Thank you, Kellen. Thank you, guys. I'll see you next time. Hey, bye, Kellen. Man, I really love that. No kidding. The so-and-so show players are the best. Mm -hmm. Reveal the question. Oh, hey, what are some ways people are different from each other? Yeah, it could be the way people look. Oh, like hair color or nostril shape. Mine are crooked. Oh, how mm -hmm. about that? Yeah, or it could be other things, too, like uh, what subject in school people are good at or how many brothers and sisters people have? Yeah, the possibilities are pretty much endless. Yeah, so you guys talk it out. What are some ways people are different from each other? And we will see you next time. Yes, I am John. And I'm Brandon. And this was the So and So Show. <laughs> are we different from each other? I, yeah, we're very different. You think so? How? Yeah. I love Jesus. He's so cool. Do do out of the Bible. It's so cool. I get to tell it after school. Psych at church. It's so cool. Can I finish a minute? Let me dance. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Oh, sorry. Hold on. That's better. Ah, oh, isn't it beautiful how God loves everyone? 
In our story today, God told Peter to give people a chance even though they were different from him. Give people a chance. God showed Peter that his rescue plan is for all of us. God promised Abraham that he would bless the whole world through Abraham's family. Hundreds of years later, one of Abraham's descendants, Jesus, made it possible for the whole world to know God, which is what God wanted Peter to realize. If God loved the whole world through Jesus, you can love other people too. Even if they look different than you, talk different than you, believe differently than you do. In fact, instead of focusing on all your differences, try looking at others the same way God looks at all of us, with love. Here's the one thing to remember today. Knowing Jesus changes the way you see others. It's like Jesus puts others into clear focus for us so that we can see them the way he does. (laughs) Oh, oh, wow, you're beautiful. I love those shoes, y'all. Selfie! Wait, okay, wait. Eh, eh. Oh wait. Oh no, it's it's a uh, it's out of focus. Oh, haha! <laughs> I gotta put it in auto focus. Oh, wait, it's already it's already in auto focus. My face is blurry. Is it right? It's, okay. Okay. I'll see you later. <laughs> in focus, hopefully. What a great story. What a great reminder that God thinks everyone is super valuable and important. God told Peter that he should give others a chance. He wanted Peter to reach out to Cornelius and his family, even though they didn't come from the same background. Because Peter did, Cornelius and his whole household put their faith in Jesus. If you think about it, the reason that we know about Jesus today is because someone told us. God wants all people to know him. His rescue plan is for all of us. Knowing Jesus changes the way you see others. Let's pray and ask God to help us see others the way he does. Dear God, thank you for loving everyone. Thank you for inviting all of us to be part of your big story. Sometimes when we see people who are different from us, it's hard for us to remember to reach out and get to know them. Thank you for reminding us that you want us to love and include everyone around us, not just the people who are most like us. Please help us to see other people the way you do. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you had a great time today. We're going to close our time together with a prayer slide for you and your family to share. We'll see you next week.